If you've been waiting for some sort of improvement in Buffalo, mm. you've been waiting a long time for yes. some sort of improvement in Buffalo. They've been waiting literally the longest out of any pro North American sports team. Out of the four major uh, programs to make the playoffs and win a damn round. That's like, rough. Nobody's been waiting longer than Sabres fans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. They finished sixth last year. In the division. In the division. I had them ranked at second. And there's a reason. So for did that. I. There's yeah. a reason for that. It's because this Buffalo Sabres roster has a ton of talent. They ran into some pretty serious injuries. If you don't have your 40 goal scorer who's seven foot a billion, it's kind of hard to win games. It's I for me, it all came down to Devin Levi. I thought he was going to come in and be this rookie sensation. And it doesn't quite work that way. Right now. Not that he was bad. He had a good season, especially in the AHL. But doesn't the, work that way. There are a lot of reasons, if you're a Sabres fan, to be excited, but like cautiously excited, okay? First off, we'll start with the Fords. I do want to get to Levi. Sure. In fact, let's not start with the Fords. Let's start with the head coach. Mm. I think it's notable that the Buffalo Sabres were one of three teams in the Eastern Conference to finish out of the playoffs, but have a plus goal differential. It goes to show, too, that, by the way, the Islanders and the Capitals, who beat them both, uh, beat all these teams to the playoffs, had a negative 17 and a negative 37 goal differential, respectively. Brutal. And when you talk to people, a lot of people say, listen, the Sabres were very, very good. The fact that they were able to have a plus goal differential, plus two, and not make it's the playoffs, plus. Yeah. it's a plus. There's a lot to build on there, but they were not playing, to a lot of people's standards, playoff-style hockey or hockey that's going to get them even to the playoffs. Lindy Ruff should change that, right? He should. Uh, they've had a lot of, yeah, we'll try this guy coaches, um, and now they get one with tenure. Mm -hmm. Some would argue that whatever he has to offer is past its best when it comes to the NHL. It's maybe a little stale. Um, it can't It can't be worse than Ralph Kruger, who was not even coaching hockey. Well, <laughs> when mean, they hired him. I was kind of alluding to him a little bit. Seems like a wonderful guy. Um, I'm fascinated to know what Lindy can bring to this team because – he, he was your classic coach in New Jersey. Um, he got goaltending. He looked like a genius. He didn't get goaltending. He should be fired immediately, and the fans let him know it. Um, they had chance for one of each. Yes. Um, so it really comes down to how good Levi and UPL are. Right. And, well, I guess we'll go to that next. Uh, you know, Uka, Uka Pekka Lukanen, or Uka Pekka Lukanen and Devin Levi uh, are both highly rated young goaltenders that you expect a lot from. I mean, UPL is Jesse's favorite goalie. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I love him in uh, NHL franchise mode. And De Steve has a definite love of Devin Levi. You talk about Devin Levi all the time, but they He's there really, was really good. There was some struggling last year. There was a uh, depth mm -hmm. signing, by the way, James Reimer. Yes, mm -hmm. he was definitely way up there in my uh, I didn't know he played there. Mr. <laughs> Hayden, when he walked in, was like, did you guys know yeah. I did? And I was confused when I found out. The talking about goalies struggling last season, January first, um, the league, uh, the Sabers had the league's twenty seventh best record. They were fifteen, nineteen, and four. So the fact that they finished not, where they did, spectacular stuff. Not great. So the reason they got there was simply the goaltending. Devin Levi had an eight eighty eight save percentage at by the time that point came around. Yeah, Eric Comrie had an eight sixty three, Ma and no. UPL had an eight ninety two. And at the end of the season, the team finished with the eleventh least goals against. They were top eleven in allowing goals. That's and incredible. Let me add to that. UPL finished the season. You said he was at an eight ninety two midway. He was a season. seven eight and two and an eight ninety two come January. So here's where he finished at the end of the season. 27, 22, and 4 with a 9-10 save percentage. They were That's pretty hot to end car. the year, and the thing that kind of sunk them was goal scoring. Like, they finished in way down in, in terms of league uh, league stats in terms of goal scoring. I think they're 22nd mm -hmm. um, in, in goals for in the league. So they're, if they get some solid goaltending early on, this thing could look a lot different than it did last year, but there's still a lot of question marks. And a full season of Bowen Byram. Yes, like, yes, very important. Yes, you don't have Casey Middlestat, but a one, two, three of Darlene Power Byram is an embarrassment of riches. I don't even care who plays on the other side, or yeah. maybe you have one of them play on their offside. And, well, and you talked about Devin Levi a lot on, on the goaltending. It's 
as you say, another year of Bo Byram, another year of this guy just playing NHL games. Yes. Like our ex, all th I think all three of us had the Buffalo Sabres making the playoffs last year mm -hmm. because yeah. we thought everything looked there on paper that it was going to be good and everything was going to come together. And that included a rookie goaltender who had never been a starter in the National Hockey League coming in and just taking the reins as a starter. That doesn't happen. You know, that doesn't usually happen. So now we get him for a second year in the NHL. He's going to be more mature. He has UPL there who can probably just mm -hmm. he'll be the starter out of camp, I assume. And everything's easier for him. So everything has to be moving in the right direction for Buffalo. I like that. And the, Bi the Byron pickup's a big one. Yeah. UPL's progression reminds me, and this is a long time ago, but a little bit of Jake Markstrom's, where he was very highly touted, and then he was on a not very good team for long enough that we forgot that. And now here he is. One yeah, of his, the best his goalies in the I NHL. think Jake Markstrom's like NHL 2010 potential was like 95. I know. Yeah, he's and been at it a very long time. He like has. He played in the World Juniors against like Tavares, I think. Yeah, Rasp Stalin, by the way. One of the four Buffalo Sabres that scored over 20 goals last year. Wow. And people, I got him the contract. People forget, right? Like, this is the new captain of the team. People forget how good this guy is because Buffalo was a non-factor last year. Half of those were scored in one month. Tage Thompson, <laughs> who had a nagging injury all year long. Mm -hmm. Missed a lot of time. You know, was down 11 goals. He had 40-something the year before. He had 29 last year. One guy that I'm looking at who's going to get a lot more time because Jeff Skinner was bought out is J.J. Paterka who, in a second-line role, had 50 points last year. Noted Alan Walsh clients. Absolutely. And he had 28 goals. 28 goals for the Sabres who couldn't score, and now he's going to get more time and he's going to play along Alex Tuck and, uh, and Tage Thompson. Yeah, I man. I feel like that's a fantasy sleeper. I was just going to say I'm 100%. I, I have my draft tomorrow. Oh, okay. So you're taking Paterka now? After first they've overall? already played a game. Are you taking a goalie or Paterka first overall? I'm taking uh, <laughs> UPL. UPL? Fourth overall. I like it. Jesse, mm -hmm. you look at the forward group yeah. here, and the first line looks great. The second line looks okay. <laughs> then we worry. Then it kind of falls off, and this is where the question marks really start for the Sabres. I think you nailed it in that. I was really high on the Sabres last season, and if goaltending was better, like things could come together. But the main thing that they didn't get going last year was the goal scoring. I mm -hmm. mentioned that already. And this offseason, they chose to not address that. I expected them to go out and, we have cap space. Mm -hmm. We have a rich owner. Let's go spend money, get some goal scoring on this team. And I'm very disappointed that this is the forward group they're entering the season with because I don't look at that as a big improvement over last year where we know the horses that they had couldn't perform to the level where it was adequate enough to be a playoff team. And this offseason, you address that by doing what? Well, they, you got they, they did add up front. They got Ryan McLeod by trading one of their best prospects. <laughs> Like a former top 10 pick. It's yeah. kind of wild. Yeah, I, do, I don't look at Jason Zucker as the answer. And, you know, like, I don't I don't. Two see... years removed from a 25-plus goal <laughs> year. Two years or one year removed. I don't me. see Sam Lafferty on the fourth line stepping in and being your big goal scorer. Like, Tage, Tage is, I don't, he's probably closer to the 40-goal scorer we saw a couple of years ago. But he wasn't that last year. And there's going to be more goals to gain there. But I just, I don't see the goal scoring. The, I don't know how they're going to score. The kids have to come through. Like, they have a lot of guys who project to be good. Mm -hmm. and, the, and this is why, like, I really like what the Buffalo Sabres are doing with the Buffalo Sabres. I, mm -hmm. I think they're doing a lot of the right things. I think fans are impatient. As they and should I, be. And after they should be. years of being patient, and I totally understand that. Um, I like what they're doing, and that is not going to line up with where I have them in the Atlantic Division at all because it's a really good division. What What does a full season of Jack Quinn, who missed a lot of the year with um, mm -hmm. an injury, 27 games, Nine goals, ten assists, nineteen points. What do you think that kind of boost gives them? Uh, it's not necessarily the kind of boost that comes immediately, right? Like, if you miss that much time, it's because you were hurt, and that takes away from your development, and that takes away from working out and what kind of shape he's in. We're not going to know until like the end of October. But if you get a guy scoring at what is that, zero point six, zero point seven points a game? And you can't score. Mm -hmm. Massive boost. Massive mm -hmm. boost to your offense. What do you need to see? Because Casey Middlestat's gone, as we know, with the Bo Byram trade. What do you need to see from Dylan Cousins in the 2C, guys? You need him to be the uh, the workhorse from Whitehorse. You, you, you got to have him live up uh, to that hype. Um, 
I mean, making the middle stat trade for Byram, I, I think you make every day of the week, mm-hmm. like regardless of whether or not you have a Dylan Cousins to to back it up. I just think that's a really, I mean, he's a fourth overall pick for the Buffalo seventh. Sabres. Seventh. No, Byram. Oh, Byram. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, Cousins. Is- uh, like they have so many top ten picks. <laughs> yeah, like it's absolutely <laughs> absurd. Um, no, Cousins. Um, uh, I would. What I would like to see him and others on the Sabres surrounded by is. A uh, little bit of meat, because like we just before shooting this, like full transparency, it's on the it's during their first game against the Devils because the season starts early for them in Europe. Um, there's a pushing and shoving match after the whistle, and you have poor little Dylan Cousins getting in there, who's not one of the biggest guys in this league. He's a tough nut though, who has to throw around his own weight too much, and yeah. you can't make him or any of the other kids on this team do that an unreasonable amount because they're going to get clobbered out there. Dylan Cousins, by the way, one season removed from a 31-goal campaign. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's a great player, man. It's it's not unlike Tage Thompson where he scored 47 goals and then last year he wasn't even a 30-goal scorer. Yeah. And a lot of that's with injuries and everything. But Cousins was a 30-goal scorer and then last year he wasn't even a 20-goal scorer. So if I'm talking about goals coming back to this lineup, there's just by default, you expect those guys to perform closer to their 20 2022 selves as opposed to last year. So there's some improvement to be had just by having these guys on the team. There are a lot, as you said, Jesse, a lot of question marks with this team, but they're good question marks, man. Mm -hmm. And and so that's what makes the Buffalo Sabres so exciting, so tantalizing, but I'm not going to be so bold to put them second place in the division this year. (laughs) And it's important that you understand the Buffalo Sabres had 84 points last year with all of those injuries and not being able to score, and their BetMGM odds are 88 Point five. Oh wow! Oh, that's pretty high. You think that's high? I I would go under there and like listen. Last year and this year, I think the Buffalo Sabers are going to make me look the most stupid for completely different reasons. Sure. Last year I had them second. That was dumb. <laughs> this year I have them seventh, and I think that could make me look really stupid, dude. It's a great division. It's a really, really good division with a few monkey wrenches. The Bruins don't have their goalie. Um, You know, is Florida going to be tired? Detroit take a step. Ottawa take a step. You know, there's so many questions in the Atlantic. I don't think there's a single bad team, and I'm going to throw the Sabres in there. But if you're in a really competitive division, you got goaltending. You have the defense that's developing. You got to score. Yeah. And until they show that they have a depth uh, at – offensively, it's difficult to put them above an Ottawa, a, a Detroit. Jesse. I take the under on that. And I made this, 88 and a half, by the way. Yeah, I'm taking under 88 and a half. And I made this prediction before Line A and Reinbacher went out, but I have them eighth in the division. Wow. I have a Montreal Whoa. That is just is seventh there. Um, and you didn't change your thing. No, no, I'll leave it. So, wow. Okay. Yeah, what am I doing? You. Changing picks. Like, <laughs> what am I doing? Commit. I think to something, right. Steve. Put your flag in the Man. sand. Yeah. The over-under for me is hard because I do think this is a very, very good team, and I think they're better than Detroit Red Wings. Uh, so I have them over. Um, and and I have them over. I think these guys are the young, exciting team in the NHL this year that we go, man, they're playing with house money. They are essentially the Team North America of the Atlantic Division. Oh, they'll be fun to watch. They're going to be oh, a yeah. riot. I have them sixth. Okay. And that's only because I have the Senators who have a better goalie in theory, well, at fifth. But I would not be shocked to see the Sabres out point score the Senators, and I do think you hammer the over on the 88 and a half. Wow. Um, that is the, uh, that's the Buffalo Sabres season preview from the SDP.